Welcome to Travel Beans. This is me, Emma, and this is my partner, Alex. We are full-time English teachers that spend every penny we earn on our passions of travel and creating videos. And this is our Bulgaria series. This is the story of how we chose a random bit of green on a map to escape the busy city life of Istanbul, which turned into an epic story of self-discovery. Just kidding, but look how nice it looks. In this series, you won't find any self-congratulatory, motivational speeches or epic beach bods. <laughs> Just two very average people saying very average things. Someone did a poo up there. <laughs> I saw it. Like I had some creepy old man blow smoke over my face. That's what it felt like. <laughs> look sick. I am sick. But look more sick. But before all this, we had to get there. Guys, welcome in. In today's video, Alex and I are going to be taking you guys along with us on our journey from Istanbul to Bulgaria. We have booked an overnight train known as the Istanbul Sofia Express, and we have splashed out, to be quite honest. This is the most we've ever spent. We never go for the top range, but we have gone for the two berth private cabin with air conditioning. I am so excited about this. I have no idea how any of this is gonna work, but I'm really excited to find out. We paid about 420 lira, which is about 30 quid each, to get all of our stuff and ourselves from Istanbul to Sofia. Bargain. There are other options for a four berth cabin, which is cheaper. Once we arrive in Sofia tomorrow morning, we're going to be getting a bus from there down towards Piran National Park. There is a town nearby called Bansko, which we will be staying in and doing a few days of hiking in the mountains. After six weeks in a city, a beautiful, wonderful city with so much good food to eat, it is time for these beans to get some nature, some fresh air and some exercise exercise. Firstly, I know what you're thinking, you judgmental people. It's a bit dingy. It's a bit rough around the edges. Well, you know what? It's rough, but we love it because it's ours. <laughs> As you come in, you may notice, where's the bed, guys? I have no idea is the answer, but I'm guessing it's going to be a bunk situation where this is going to fold down as a top bunk and maybe these seats are going to fold down to be the bottom. From our experiences of overnight trains, usually the ticket conductor will come over at some point and he will fold out the beds, he will give you your blankets, your pillows, everything you need for a comfy sleep. One thing that we can unfortunately expect though is that we will be getting to the border in the middle of the night and we are going to have to get off and we're going to have to show all our documents. I don't know how they're going to feel about us filming at the border, but we'll try anyway. Yeah, we'll be complaining about being tired <laughs> because we hate waking up. Each train carriage has toilets on either end, but also we have a handy little sink over here as well. So if you're brushing your teeth, washing your face, all that kind of stuff, you can do that here. They've got charging points. There's also racks for hanging things and we've got storage shelf up top for our bags. And then, if you look in here, we've got a nice little desk space. Nice. Bit of work, which we won't be doing. No, but we'll we be could. playing Switch. That's what we might be doing. Um, and then, if you look in here, we've got a fridge. We've got a fridge, You're guys. You're kidding me. I mean, it doesn't feel Ooh, is that cold. Free, is that free crackers? I don't know if it's free. I wonder if it's like hotels and they're going to charge us like a hundred lira for a packet. Or some fool left his delicious, tasty crackers for us to eat. Maybe. We'll find out. Anyway, it doesn't feel very cold in there, so maybe once the engine's on, it'll cool down. Um, and then the and other then drawer? In the other one, we just have a bit of storage space. Anyway, we are going to settle in a bit into our cosy new apartment, and <laughs> we will see you guys on the rails. <laughs> Just a little bit of information for those of you who are interested in taking this journey is that you cannot buy the train tickets online, annoyingly enough. You actually have to go to a specific station to buy the tickets 
and confusingly that's not the same station that the train actually leaves from. The train actually departs from a station about an hour away from there but luckily they do actually put a shuttle bus on between the two which leaves at around 8.30 and there's only one of those each evening so make sure you catch it on time. Another thing worth noting is that you don't have to book this ticket in advance, you can actually do it on the same day even on public holidays and busy periods it never seems to be booked out. That was exactly what Alex and I did this morning and we were actually a little bit nervous about it before going but we had no need to be, it was super easy and super straightforward. Another thing worth noting is that there's no food cart on the train. Now the train doesn't actually leave until 9.40 in the summertime, which means that you do have time to go for dinner first, but you might want to get a couple snacks with you and also maybe grab some water. We've gone for water and a bottle of wine that we had left over, as well as a few snacks like some popcorn and apricots and nuts. So now for the rest of the evening, I think we're just gonna sit down, play a bit of Nintendo Switch for our entertainment. This thing has been a godsend for travel days. It literally makes the time go so, so fast. So we're gonna sit here, play some Switch, enjoy our wine and chill. We have set up our beds for the evening and now getting all tucked in. Look at him, he's all snuggled in. <laughs> and for the first time I think ever, Emma has given me, well she's actually insisted on taking the top bunk because it's always me that gets to do that and then has to get up in the night. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> if you're wondering about the toilet situation or if you're not, I'm going to tell you about it. There is a squat toilet and a normal western toilet. I can't say the smell emanating out of them is a five star quality experience, <laughs> but as long as you block your nose, you're gonna get the job done. <laughs> In terms of comfort for the bed, this is great. Pillow, super squidgy, a lot of support. We're gonna go to sleep now because in a couple of hours we're gonna have to wake up for the border crossing to show our passports. Hopefully that doesn't take too long so we can go straight back to sleep. But we'll see you when we're crossing over to Bulgaria. <laughs> it's 2.07 a.m. We just had a knock on the door saying we're at the border and we need to get our passports. So let's go. so we were gone for just over 10 minutes as we were leaving the passport control office there was a long line of people waiting to be seen so I, I'm guessing we're going to be stopped here for about an hour so yeah piece of advice for you if you don't want too long of an interrupted sleep try and get up straight away as soon as they're knocking on the door and get out because um, yeah we must have been in and out within seconds it was great <laughs> Good morning, Yoni Bean. I'm so sleepy. How long is it? <laughs> um, okay, I never expected it to be a luxury experience, that's for sure. I've been on night trains before, so I was under no false impressions that I was going to have a great night's sleep. But when we got up to do the customs at like 2 a.m. and we were in and out in 10 minutes, we knew we were too lucky. We knew that wouldn't be it. <laughs> We naively thought, <laughs> now it's just time to sleep. Yeah, now we could just sleep through until 8.30 when we get to Sofia. But actually, no, that wasn't the case. We must have had at least, after that, maybe four or five times we had passport control or the police knocking on the door to either check the room or our passports over the next, like, two and a half hours. That so, was just the Turkish border. We weren't really thinking... Of course, we also had yeah. to do the Bulgarian border. Exactly. Um, the only good thing is that at the Bulgarian border, they come and knock on the door and take your passport to go and get it sorted. So you don't actually have to get out. 
but you still have to wake up when they come and knock on the door again to give it back to you. But a pro is that I had an actual proper comfy night's sleep. Like the bed is actually really comfortable and the pillow is all fluffy. Like I actually had a really nice comfort level, even though I'm on a train. So that was quite nice. A con. <laughs> I don't know if you smelt this out, but like there was one point in the night last night where the room stank of smoke in our non-smoking cabin. <laughs> yeah, it did smell pretty bad. It was gross. It was like it was coming through the aircon and blowing onto my face. Like I had some creepy old man blowing smoke over my face. That's what it felt like. <laughs> Despite the complaining, we're just being British. Actually, this is well worth the money spent. Like we spent about, well, just over 30 pounds to get us and our luggage all the way to Sofia. If we'd have flown, it would have cost us more than like 250 pounds without luggage. So probably more like 350 pounds to get to Sofia. So although it would have been quicker, it would have been so much more expensive. <laughs> After our 10 hour train journey, we finally arrived in Sofia. We then grabbed tickets from the bus station and took a three hour bus to the Bulgarian mountains. Next time on Travel Beans, we get our first taste of the Bulgarian countryside. And Alex tells us about what wildlife we have a chance of seeing while we're there. So there's a lot of interesting wildlife here, which is one of the main reasons that we chose here. And they have bears, which you're guaranteed to get eaten by, and also they have wolves. They're not those stupid black bears that run away at any sign of life. It's the proper muscly brown bears.